Too busy moving into a spooky house to check out a full-length horror movie syllabus video? Don't worry, we've got your back. Check out this Cliff's Notes version of our Haunted House video, and then stay tuned for our doctorate level selection for that subgenre. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Horror Movie Syllabus. My name is Professor Victor and I'll be your host as we go through all the essential, noteworthy, interesting, and notorious modern horror films. If you're new to the channel, I recommend you check out the introduction video. There's a link to that in the description below, and it'll give you a pretty good idea of what we usually do at the horror movie syllabus, which is take a look at a specific subgenre and then talk, uh, take three movies from that subgenre to explore. Uh, today, though, what we're doing is our, our, our doctorate level series where we are going to recap a subgenre that we've already looked at and then add a new doctorate level fourth movie to that subgenre to talk about. Uh, and the subgenre we're looking at or revisiting is haunted houses, uh, haunted house horror movies. It's a subgenre that we have explored in the past uh, and is a, one that I like quite a bit and that I'm not alone. It's very, very popular. And in our original video on haunted house horror movies, we talked about the difference between that and ghost movies or even demon movies and possession movies because there's a lot of overlap. There's a lot of uh, the, the lines between those subgenres are a bit blurry, but for haunted houses, the, the clear delineation is it's a location, right? It's a house that's haunted. It's not a person, uh, whereas like ghosts and, and demons and even possession movies tend to latch on to people or maybe are a little bit more mobile. In this case, we're talking about movies where the, the ghosts, uh, the scary things are all tied to a location and hence the haunted house house right so it's a simple a simple delineation for this subgenre and i think that that works out rather well because even though you'll see ghosts or demons or even possessions in some of the haunted house movies it is tied to a location so that makes it easy to, de to decide that it's a haunted house movie goes in the haunted house subgenre we talked about three such movies in our previous video on haunted houses and we're going to go ahead and recap what those movies were and what we said about them right The first movie that we talked about is the Amityville Horror. And we talked about how that movie is kind of the quintessential haunted house movie in horror. Uh, it's very well known. But maybe it's overrated or, or really not as good as you would think it would be considering its reputation. Uh, and it's based on a supposedly true story of a family that's moved into a house where some murders were committed. The murders are definitely true. Uh, the haunting aspect of it is questionable at best. And we talked about how that's, you know, a, an interesting part of the movie or really maybe the more interesting part about it is that the examination of that family and how much they might have been lying and how much their story might not be true is maybe more interesting than the movie itself which is honestly rather slow and not that interesting and not that good we also talked about how this movie spawned a whole franchise of movies which at some point really have nothing to do anymore with the original story at all and yet the, strong, the, the name of the brand, the, the Amityville brand, is strong enough to still warrant, to this day, more movies coming out and how strange that is. So the Amityville Horror is an interesting one because its reputation is far broader and more uh, pronounced than it maybe should be, and yet it still stands up. But an uh, interesting thing and uh, interesting movie, but maybe interesting more to talk about than to actually watch. The next Haunted House movie we talked about was Poltergeist. And Poltergeist is a favorite of mine. Uh, to this day, I still love that movie quite a bit. And I think it holds up remarkably well considering uh, the effects and the, you know, the datedness. I mean, the movie is, what, almost 40 years old now. Uh, so uh, it is a, you know, a good, good movie that stands the test of time. But we spend a lot of time talking about uh, its connection to Steven Spielberg, who did not direct it officially, but rumor has it he did uh, direct it, even though he was only listed as a producer. And Toby Hooper of Texas Chainsaw Massacre fame is the credited director. We talked a lot about that. We talked about the Poltergeist curse, uh, some of the unfortunate uh, uh, accidents and deaths that surrounded the the movie, including Heather O'Rourke and Dominique Dunn and, and some of the uh, unfortunate true stories that, that, that added to the lore uh, and creepiness of the movie. Uh, but we talked about uh, how as a kid, this movie scared me so much. And even as an adult, I see how it can still be unsettling, even though, again, that some of the effects might be a little dated. Some of the ideas might be a little dated. It still remarkably holds up. And I, I love it, not just for nostalgic reasons, but because I think it works really, really well. It's a solid horror movie. Uh, and while the sequels that, that come may not really be uh, true haunted house movies, the original definitely is a haunted house movie. Uh, and, and, you know, I won't spoil the ending to explain why, but it's very clear. So check it out if you haven't. And the last haunted house movie we talked about is The Others. 
and The Others is a fantastic and I would argue underrated movie uh, starring uh, Scream Queen uh, Nicole Kidman, who we love here at the Horror Movie Syllabus, uh, uh, in, in the lead role. And she is fantastic and this movie is fantastic. It is all about mood and atmosphere. It is wonderfully made. It's just dripping with just style and, and creep and, and dread. And it's absolutely wonderful. It's got kids that are not super annoying and work really well for the movie. And I don't want to spoil it because it's really wonderful. You should see it if you haven't seen it. And I don't, you know, don't get it, get it, let it get spoiled for you. But it's just an incredibly well-made movie. And we talked about how well made it was and how it seems to be slightly underrated and how everybody who's seen it seems to love it. And it was a hit, but it doesn't seem like it gets talked about as much as other movies. I don't know if it's because it was never franchised or what, but it doesn't seem like it gets the love that it should get as being one of the best of the Haunted House horror movies. So those are the movies that we discussed in our Haunted House horror movie video, uh, but now let's talk about a fourth doctorate level selection. Our doctorate level Haunted House movie is We Are Still Here. We Are Still Here came out in 2015 and is an excellent movie uh, that really seems to have kind of flown under the radar, but is really well received and is a wonderful example of uh, you know mood and atmosphere and stark imagery while sprinkling in modern jump scares and trying to tackle the ideas of grief and uh, and guilt. And I think it does that in a very, very strong and convincing and appealing way. Uh, but we'll get into that. If you're not familiar with it, the movie's set in the late 70s and is about a family, a husband and wife who are grappling with the uh, the death, the recent death of their adult child, their adult son. And they're moving to a new house kind of out in the middle of nowhere uh, to to kind of get away from things that remind them of him and and maybe kind of just like cope with their grief and kind of get a fresh start. Only when they get to this house, strange things start happening. And uh, the mom starts to think that maybe her son is there and kind of trying to connect. But of course, we know that hijinks are going to abound instead. So we'll stop there and let the hijinks remain a mystery for those of you that haven't seen it yet. So we don't spoil it for you. But the movie itself is really surprisingly good. And I say surprisingly good because it is a little bit uh, lesser known and is done by what I think is a first time director, a guy named Ted Geohagen. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing his name right. Uh, and apologies if I'm butchering it. But uh, I think, like, looking it up, I think this was his first movie or his first feature length film, at least. He's done a lot of horror work, but mostly as a writer. Uh, and maybe he's done like some shorts or something like that. But this was, I think, his first uh, full length feature movie. And uh, and I think he directed it when he was in his 30s and really, really good. Not great, not perfect, but really, really good. But I'll come back to that in a minute. The movie stars Barbara Crampton, fan favorite and horror movie syllabus favorite, uh, Scream Queen uh, as the mother. Uh, and and she's really wonderful here. She, honestly, I don't, I can't recall ever seeing Barbara Crampton in a role I didn't like her in. And she's good here and she brings the gravitas here uh, as the mother who's grieving and, and does a really wonderful job of it. The guy playing her husband, whose name escapes me at the moment and uh, uh, isn't really that important, <laughs> frankly, he's less good. Uh, especially when you compare him with Barbara Crampton, he's not as good, but he's serviceable. He's perfectly fine. What's interesting about this movie is that it's got a whole bunch of other characters that pop up, and they're weird. It's got Larry Fessenden as uh, uh, the husband of a, of a friend of Barbara Crampton's character. Uh, and they're, and they're, and he and his wife are kind of hippie people, and they're coming to kind of examine the house and see what's going on there. And they work out rather well. Larry Fessenden's always fun, uh, of course, but uh, their characters are weird by design, right? They're supposed to be kind of weird hippy-dippy people, and that works. But, like, there's, you know, their son, who was friends with uh, Barbara Crampton's son, he and his girlfriend show up, and they're just kind of a little off. There's some weird neighbors. The town folks are weird. And... At first, it feels like they're just bad actors, but as the movie goes on, you realize maybe that's by design. Maybe it's actually to increase a certain strangeness or otherworldliness going on in the movie, and it's effective. It worked for me. Like I said, at first, I was kind of put off. I was like, oh, this is some bad acting. And then as it went on, I was like, oh, no, it's not. It actually is just it's putting me on edge in the right way. And so I really liked that. Uh, this movie is about edge. It's about mood. Like There are jump scares in the movie, and I think for the most part, the jump scares are pretty effective. They are modern-style jump scares, but they work pretty well. 
but it's the mood of this movie. It's setting this movie in this remote location, you know, this barren uh, tundra, if you will, this snow-covered uh, expanse that is secluded and empty, and a house that is a rather benign, average, ordinary house. It doesn't look particularly creepy by itself. It's not like some gothic looking, strange, creepy house. It's just a regular house. Uh, I thought those were nice touches. The movie felt very realistic in that sense. It's just a secluded house out in the middle of nowhere. And it's kind of like that, that sense of isolation is really thick in the movie and it works excellently. The atmosphere is great in this movie. I see why Ted, the director, got a lot of acclaim when this movie came out uh, in certain circles because it is really well made. Like I said, some of the performances might be a little iffy. Some of the jump scares might be a little, uh, you know, rote and modern, but I'm nitpicking here. Like I said, it's not a flawless movie. There are some flaws. There's a little bit of uh, editing issues. There's a little bit of dialogue. I think you wrote the movie too. And some of the dialogue's a little bit clunky, uh, but you know, you'll forgive it because overall the movie's working so well. Uh, does it reinvent the wheel? Not really. I know some of the praise on it was that, oh, it's a fresh take on the Haunted House movie. A little bit. A little bit. You know, it's got, it's got, uh, uh, you know, tinges of the fog in terms of like, you know, a historical wrong that it's permeating, uh, you know, uh, modern day and in, in this house in particular. Uh, and I don't want to spoil things. I'm dancing around that a little bit, but it's got, some elements that you are you are, are, are tropes if you will from earlier horror movies it's got an appreciation for the genre and the subgenre and, and and i respect that and i think it's strong especially for a first time director if he really is a first time director like i think he is it's a really impressive debut again not a perfect debut but really strong uh, i can't praise the imagery the, the 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 look of the movie the mood of the movie some of the camera works a little wonky sometimes he goes handheld and and i'm not sure he should be going handheld it didn't feel quite right to me uh, but nitpicks nitpicks for what is overall a wonderful mood piece uh, if you've got the patience for it because it's a little bit slow I think this is a movie that's definitely worth checking out. If you like haunted house movies, if you like thick atmosphere, if you like creepy stuff, uh, and, you know, just a peppering of, of, of jump scares, and you like a solid narrative, and you like Barbara Crampton, any of these things will probably get uh, uh, be be satisfying for you to check this one out. And if you've seen it already, let me know what you think because I I really like this one. I think this one flies under the radar. It's what we try to do with the Doctor level selections is pick something that's a little less known, a little off the beaten path. And I feel like this one qualifies. But I'm sure a few of you have seen this one, so let me know in the comments below what you think of it. But I would say high marks for We Are Still Here. Definitely worth your time. So that's our doctorate selection for the haunted house subgenre, but I've also got an extra credit selection for you because if you're anything like me, you can't get enough of a good haunted house movie. The extra credit movie we're going to talk about is House on Haunted Hill. And House on Haunted Hill came out in 1999 because it's the remake we're talking about, not the original 1959 version that was made by William Castle starring Vincent Price, which is a bona fide classic, but is out of scope for the syllabus because it's pre-1970. So what we're talking about today is the remake, which is definitely worth talking about, if not necessarily worth seeing, but we'll get into that in just a second. If you haven't seen the remake, the movie is basically tracking the original's plot. It's got an eccentric rich guy who is offering a million dollar prize to whoever can stay the night in this, you know, supposedly haunted, uh, insane asylum. And, you know, a, a group of people come together and they're, of course, all strange and they've got their different backstories and, and disparate personalities and whatnot. And the hijinks start to abound. And, of course, uh, we will not spoil the hijinks, but uh, uh, we know that you know, not everybody's going to be able to make it through the night, uh, of course, because we know what this movie's about. Uh, but if you haven't seen the remake of House on Hunt Hill and you have seen the original, I think you could probably appreciate what the remake is trying to do. See, uh, the original movie might be a bona fide classic, or at least I called it that. It's really more of a bona fide cult classic, right? It's not a great movie. It's actually pretty schlocky. Uh, and William Castle was kind of known for making schlocky horror films. And House on Haunted Hill is, is definitely one of those. Uh, it's, it's campy. It's schlocky. It's, but it's fun. It's a good movie. It's a lot of fun. And it's got a, a lot of wonderful uh, you know, scenes in it that really stand out and, and, uh, and, and resonate. Uh, and, and I'd say that what the, uh, the remake is trying to do uh, is not only you know use the same basic premise and storyline, but to also have that same kind of fun. 
Uh, now the question is whether or not it's actually successful in that in that endeavor. Um, now it's worth it's worth noting that this movie came out during what I would like to call remake fever in the horror genre. Uh, it's in the late '90s where they're doing a lot of remakes. Uh, uh, you know, they're mining the 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 the, the back catalog to, to release all these uh, uh re-release all these movies and a new sensibility with you know with modern editing style and you know modern actors and whatever you're getting american remakes of foreign horror remake city uh so this is coming out right during all of that uh so the, no no surprise why they'd make this movie uh you know uh this remake because it's a popular enough movie to, to warrant a remake what is a surprise is the talent they got in front of the camera uh, because you've got Jeffrey Rush playing the Vincent Price role, and you've got Tay Diggs and Ali Larder and Famke Jansen and, uh, and and Jeffrey Combs. Everybody loves Jeffrey Combs. Chris Kattan's in there for some reason. Like, there's a lot of people. Peter Gallagher is in there. Um, <laughs> a lot of quality acting in this movie, uh, and it's hard to explain why, other than paychecks, right? Like, they had a budget for this movie. Uh, you know, William Castle didn't have this kind of money to work with. Uh, and the money is, I think, on screen for the most part. Again, the talent got paid. I'm sure of it. And there are, you know, the talents on screen and the effects look good. Now they've dated a little bit because again, it's a little CGI heavy, a little more practical than I would have expected to be honest with you. Uh, but it's right around the 1999 mark. So yeah, I think it makes some sense that some of this would be practical. They got talented people to do the work. You got Greg Nicotero, you got uh, Dick Smith doing a little bit of work in this. Apparently I think his last movie, or I'm not even sure he actually worked on it. I think maybe he they just they use some of his work in the movie uh, uh, that he had done for something that never got used or something like that. Uh, but but so they've got some talented effects people behind the camera too. So they put the money where it should be on screen, and it looks good. Uh, you know, I like that the 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 setting is kind of like this modern like kind of Art Deco style. Or I you know I don't, I'm not really into architecture, so I, but it seems like it's kind of Art Deco. Uh, it, again, kind of kind of like we are still here. It's not your obvious looking haunted house thing, but it's still creepy looking. Uh, and then you've got, you know, all the hijinks that are going on and they're done well. They're good scares. Uh, so why am I kind of hedging on this movie? Well, because it's not a great movie. Uh, you know, is it fun? I think so, uh, but I think, uh, you know, that attitude was kind of a minority attitude when it came out. I think a lot of people rolled their eyes at this because it's just yet another remake, and remakes were kind of, you know, dime a dozen at this point, and people were getting sick of them. So I don't think it really got a fair shake in that regard, and I think people have gone back and looked at it now and said, you know what, actually pretty fun. Uh, and I, I think it's kind of gotten a second life uh, as a result, and I think that that's the way it should be. Uh, it's fun but it could have been better. I think that's really my verdict on this. You know, um, is it a good time? Yeah. Are we getting pretty good acting in there? Yeah. Is the effects, does it look good? The effects look good? Yeah. But could they have done something more with this and made it better, uh, superseding the, the, the quality of the original? Absolutely, they could have. But they didn't. And I think, again, that was by design. I think they were really trying to, uh, you know, be as schlocky, if you will, as the original one. And I can respect that. But it is a missed opportunity. A, a small missed opportunity, but it's a missed opportunity nonetheless. I still like the movie, and I think other people are coming around to it and liking it. Uh, you know, if you had to choose, you'd probably choose the original over this, but I don't think there's anything wrong with this one that, that, that is worth, you know, hating on or anything like that. And I think the hate has dissipated for this one, and some love for it has blossomed. Now, there was a sequel to it. Uh, I think it was Return to House on Hunt Hill or something like that. Uh, and it's like a spinoff of one of the characters and whatever. Uh, forgettable, to be honest with you. I don't remember it very, very well, uh, but it wasn't... It didn't do much for me, and I don't think it did much for anybody else either. Um, the, the, the most noteworthy thing about it, I think, was that uh, it had like a DVD release. It was like more of like a choose your own adventure thing. Uh, but I, I never even really played with that, if I recall correctly. So, uh, neat idea. Uh, but the gimmick alone is not enough to recommend the sequel. But I would recommend the original one, uh, who is the original remake. I would actually, I would absolutely recommend the original House on Haunted Hill for sure. Been surprised. Uh, but I would actually recommend this remake. I think it's fun. It's worth your time. It's you know. Manage your expectations. It's a, it's a, it's a little bit of a fun ride. It's a fun ninety minutes or so to 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 romp through, but it's not going to change your life. And if you didn't see it, you'd be perfectly okay. It's not a must see, but uh, if you haven't seen it, check it out and let me know what you think. But if you have seen it, let me know your thoughts on this. Do you hate it? Because I know a few people did hate it. Do you still have the hate for it, or have has it grown on you? Do you love it? Do you like it at least? Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, House on Haunted Hill. I'm wondering if there's any controversy about it at this point in time because at this point, I think it's just people are like, yeah, it is what it is. It's a fun, good time. Uh, and it was probably unfairly maligned when it came out, and it's you know not worthy of too much praise now, but it's worth checking out.
So that's it for our Doctor level selection for Haunted House Horror Movies. Like I said, I like these kind of movies. And I know a lot of you guys out there do too. So let me know in the comments what, what, what would have been your Doctor level selection. Because uh, if you got some obscure, obscure horror movies, Haunted House Horror Movies, I'd like to hear about it because maybe I want to check those out. But for now, let's look at the Horror Trivia Pursuit card and answer our question live on air. Uh, as you know, I like to do this and see if I can test my metal in front of all of you. And we're going to go with the psychological category on the card because, I don't know, why not? Uh, kind of works for this, I think. Uh, and the question for this week is, when 1960s Psycho was released, who demanded theaters have a no late admission policy for the film? This is a fairly easy question, I think. I know the answer to this, uh, you know. And anybody who's gone on the... Uh, on the tram tour at Universal Studios where you get to go by the Psycho House and the Bates Motel, uh, shouldn't know the answer to this question because they actually talk about it there. But I've already known this because I, I know, because I love this movie and I, I, I know a lot about it. We've talked about it before. This is actually one of the few movies pre-1970 that I put on the syllabus because I could not bear to leave it off the syllabus. It was too influential, too important, too good. Uh, and, and it had to go on there. So you, you've seen me talk about this movie. And maybe I even touched on this point in the video. I honestly don't remember. It's been a long time since I, I looked at that video. But uh, yeah, there was a, an edict that if you came late to the movie, you would be denied entrance. You would not be allowed to come in late, kind of like at, a, at the theater or something like that, you know, which is a neat idea. And, and, and who was responsible for that? Uh, well, again, even if you don't know the answer to this, a little deductive reasoning probably will get you where you need to be on this because it shouldn't be that hard to figure it out. I'm giving you a little bit of time to uh, to think about this, uh, you know, but but reality, the answer should be fairly obvious. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just jump to this now. My answer, of course, is the director, Alfred Hitchcock, who was very particular about, you know, uh, you know, how he wanted to sell this movie, how he wanted to promote this movie. And that was part of the allure. If he showed up late, you, you couldn't get into it. But let me double check to make sure I'm right, because what if I'm wrong? It's going to be super embarrassing, right? Uh, nope, Alfred Hitchcock, of course. Uh, and yeah, like Hitchcock was really, you know, he had a, a B movie on his hand, basically. He knew it was a salacious B movie and he was selling it as such. And so this was part of that allure. You know, hey, you have to get in there on time or else you're going to not be allowed in. Honestly, if you missed the first couple minutes of this movie, you would probably be able to pick up just fine. You would not miss uh, too much. But if you came too late, you would definitely miss the most important part of the movie. So, uh, you know, it, it's a fun gimmick. It's a great movie. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. And Hitchcock, we're going to talk more about Hitchcock in the future. There's a little tease for you. Uh, but for now, we're going to call this a video. Thank you very much for hanging out. Again, leave me some suggestions for other Doctor level Farmer House movies uh, in the comments down below. Uh, but until next week, class dismissed.